why can we no longer think of the British Isles without the word pedof in front of them? Our society has become increasingly paranoid about child safety, imagining abuse behind every closed door and a paedophile in every playground. These are our children. They skip down our streets, but the paedophile is waiting. <laughs> As with terrorism, child sexual abuse dominates our news coverage when the actual prevalence of such abuse is so low that such heavy coverage doesn't make sense. Government plans paedophile hostels in neighbourhoods across the country, but will residents tolerate them? It's being claimed that children are still at risk from paedophiles because of a major shortfall in funding the policing of the internet. The Association of Chief Police Officers and a coalition of leading charities want a massive injection of money to help catch offenders. There are warnings tonight that some of the children who've been orphaned by the tsunami disaster could become victims of abuse. Orphanages are preparing themselves for a huge influx of children, but aid agencies are warning that paedophiles could try to exploit them. Men are maligned on our screens. Every other TV show has a reference to male paedophiles and abusers. Now, you look like the sort who's got some beautiful kiddies at home. What do you want to know for? What are you? Some sort of paediatrician or something? You need locking up, you do. In swimming pools and at school plays, photographs are forbidden in a pretense that it's for child safety. The real reason is to keep horrible thoughts of paedophiles at the front of our minds, where such thoughts are simply not warranted. One school in England will only publish pictures of students with faces censored. I'm, very, I'm actually very distressed by what has happened about sexual abuse of children in general. And my main distress is the kind of vilification of men. Um, there was a study which came out from one of the polytechs that became a university. And the study said that most men could become sexual abusers. And I spoke out against that on the media very, very strongly because I was furious. You know, I'm raising two sons. What is, what is the message to young men? That you're a danger to your own children? What can be done to address that? I mean... <laughs> we have to speak out. And it's not a popular thing to do, but whenever anybody makes one of these absolutely ludicrous statements, it's very important that people stand up and say, excuse me, prove that. Yeah. What is this? What, you know, like, like this university saying that, that, that all men have the potential to be abusers. That's like saying we all have the potential to be murderers. I mean, I suppose we all have the potential to be all kinds of things. It's, it's kind of nonsensical because, yeah, every man is capable of rape. Um, to then accuse the man of being a rapist or, or of, 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 of being a potential rapist because he can do is, is ridiculous. Young babies, the most vulnerable society that we can imagine, the murder of young babies are almost entirely by their mothers. Young babies don't tend to get murdered <laughs> very often, um, but almost entirely the, young, the murder of young babies are by their mother. So therefore, every mother, every woman, is potentially a baby killer. <laughs> it's it, in the same way, you, you, you know, it means nothing. By and large, 99.9% .9 of the people actually outside are, are okay. So you don't want to instill into a generation of youngsters the fact that, you know, outside people are full of weirdos who are likely to be molesting and upsetting and harming you. But you've got to make sure you ensure that alongside that 99%, you've got 1% of the population who are the ones who are likely to cause you danger and risk. I mean, they've always been there. We, we mustn't disguise ourselves and say, oh, this, this, is a, this is only just a new issue. There's always been the issue of child abuse and... Uh, and, and so on and so forth, but now we live in an age where it's even more so, and I think it's more high profile. Edicts are coming out from councils telling teachers not to touch children between the shoulders and the knees, not to let them sit on your lap if you're reading them a story. And this is, although it says it's aimed at men and women, it's aimed at men. There's national guidelines, there's, there's guidelines to the DfE, the, the local education authority issues very clear guidelines and the school actually has clear guidelines. We stand the risk of, of allegations being made against us and so you need to be scrupulously clear. You don't put yourself in a situation where you could be compromised or there's a misunderstanding. So, for example, my office door is never shut. If I'm dealing with a child, talking to a child, unless it's with a parent present or another member of staff, the door's always open.
This paranoia about child sexual abuse is no accident. It's a deliberate plan executed by government and charities to generate income out of our fears. The NSPCC and other feminist groups promote the view that men are the main abusers of children in their fundraising campaigns. But it's not true that men are more abusive than women. The NSPCC's own figures show that women commit most acts of child abuse, even allowing for their greater custody of children. Most child abuse is committed by single or unmarried women. A child's health prospects dramatically deteriorate when there's no father in the household. Is there any relation between child sexual abuse by mothers and whether they're in single parent families or normal stable families? What I have found is that the vast majority were women alone. Um, if they did have partners or husbands, the partners were either away a lot or were quite weak. It doesn't mean, you know, we have to be careful there too because it doesn't mean that uh, single parent families are bad. It's just that I cannot disguise the fact that the vast majority of this abuse has happened where there has only been when it's been mother abuse, when there's only been a mother in the home. As I say, I stayed for as long as I did because I felt that if I wasn't there, um, she would take it out on them. The reason for believing, for believing that is that my wife was abused as a child. Um, her father left when she was eight. Um, he was abused by his wife. He was told that the children would be safe if he went, he needed to go otherwise he'd have a nervous breakdown and the children would be safe but they weren't. As soon as he'd gone she started on them. Most people, men and women, have their first ever experience of violence at the hands of their mothers. Mama, I didn't mean to break it, I'm sorry. Oh, your behind gonna be sorry. I think my mother's the only woman that hasn't hurt me actually. Uh. Well, she physically beat me. But, you know, that's... Yeah, well, same here. That's, yeah, but that's okay. That's cultural. <laughs> <laughs> I was beaten until my head was bleeding. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, I, I, I was... You seem okay beaten now. Beaten damn hard. But then well, again. Well, that's only on the surface. <laughs> um, and I would never do that to my children because I experienced it. You didn't have to hit your boy like that. He's already scared to death. I appreciate you helping my Eddie, I truly do. But I'll have nobody question how I raise him, not even his daddy. Yet the presentation of child abuse overwhelmingly singles out men as perpetrators. I mean, you knew a bigger no than the last time I decked you. <laughs> this is particularly true with the presentation of child sexual abuse. Lisa, do you know why you're here? Yes. Can you tell us? Because daddy touched me in bad places. Burying your head under the covers to drown out the screams of your baby sister? Your six-year-old sister that your daddy raped night after night? Even virtually impossible examples of child abuse by men are discussed and broadcast with fervor. Let us say it is somebody who is raped mm -hmm. by a sex uh, a pervert. Let us say that it's a young woman who is raped by her father. Yeah, this woman should not, or this child, child, well, she wouldn't be a child, so you can only get this if you're over 18. Businesses like the NSPCC and Oxfam trade on the negative perception of men rather than what they know to be the reality. Some children and babies are battered to death by their mothers or burnt with boiling water or cigarettes. Some mothers deliberately poison their children, typically with bleach or rat poison. Some babies are shaken by their mothers until their necks snap. Some babies are suffocated, stabbed, neglected or starved to death. But when mothers kill their babies, it's not called murder, it's called infanticide. Only a woman can kill her baby, claim to be suffering some kind of syndrome and escape prison. In fact, women seem to be afflicted by numerous syndromes, all of which allow them to kill in cold blood and be considered blameless. Battered woman syndrome, premenstrual syndrome, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, whatever the crime, there's a female only defense using some kind of syndrome. Hey, hey Lois, look at me. I got postpartum depression. Wah! I'm sad about stuff. Wah! Uh.